So today, what we're going to look at is uh, TrueNAS. Uh, haven't looked at TrueNAS or FreeNAS uh, in quite a while uh, on the blog and the channel. And I want to sort of uh, check in, see what the state is. Um, and we're going to do that by installing TrueNAS in a virtual machine. We're going to use uh, Vert Manager and Kimu. Uh, and we're going to go through the process of installing TrueNAS uh, from the ISO file. Uh, for the purposes of this video, we're going to go through uh, TrueNAS uh, Core. So let's just look real quickly at TrueNAS. We can see the different versions. So TrueNAS um, and the software has uh, Core, Enterprise, and Scale. Um, they also have some additional management tooling like True Command, uh, which is their way of being able to manage multiple uh, TrueNAS systems at the same time. So it sort of aggregates the data uh, and lets you set up like monitoring and alerts uh, around that. Um, their enterprise product, uh, I believe, is still mostly um, you have to buy the hardware directly from IX Systems. It's the company behind TrueNAS. Uh, but TrueNAS Core and TrueNAS Scale are both um, available. They're open source projects. So if you don't need the support, uh, if you're not running mission critical, you can install it and run it um, on your own home system. So let's uh, take a look. For the purposes of the video, I'm going to be looking at TrueNAS Core, which is the probably the, the best choice if you're looking to do uh, purely storage-oriented things. You're not looking at adding other like features or services. Uh, TrueNAS Scale, which is based on Debian, uh, it uh, has a Linux base, so if you're looking to do things like Docker, um, TrueNAS Scale might be the better bet, although I think in terms of um, What's been tested the longest is TrueNAS Core, which is built on FreeBSD. So let's get into it. So what we'll do is we'll create a simple VM. So we'll go to our file, get the ISO, open that. Um, so it didn't detect it. We're going to go and look at FreeBSD. So we'll go FreeBSD, I think 13 is fine. Forward, uh, we'll give this memory. Now typically for a TrueNAS, um, if you were installing this proper, so if you were installing this on um, uh, actual hardware, it's recommended to give it eight gigabytes. Uh, just for the purposes of this video, we're gonna give it uh, four, four gigabytes of RAM, uh, and we'll just use, um, maybe two CPUs. This is actually going to be two threads. Uh, when you're doing virtualization, the CPU is actually a thread, not necessarily a dedicated physical core. <coughs> I'm going to use uh, 20 gigs. That's fine. Uh, we're going to rename this to TrueNAS uh, 13. Um, I want to customize the configuration before install network selection. Uh, because we're just doing this for testing, uh, we're just going to use this uh, on a NAT. So uh, um, if you were to do this for the purposes not for testing, but you wanted to run this and like share the true NAS to other devices on your network, you'd probably want to go to do something like a bridge device. Um, but just for testing, it's fine to use NAT. Finish. OK, now the reason we're editing uh, these options right at the moment is um, what we're going to do is we're going to add some hardware. So by default, uh, TrueNAS is going to eat up everything in your uh, disk. So if we want to actually have a device to for storage, you're going to want to have to add uh, an additional disk device. So what we're going to do is finish. Okay, I think it did. Let me create an additional drive. Okay, I think we're good. And we'll go begin installation. So you have the initial installer, we can press enter.
Okay, I'm just going to install. It's going to continue anyway. So we have the two drives here. So one drive is going to be our boot drive. The other drive is going to be our uh, what we're going to eventually use to create our pool and uh, do all of our sharing. So we'll just select one for now. If you selected both, what it'll do is actually uh, put the configuration as like a, a RAID 1 or a mirror uh, configuration. We're just going to go with this. Yes. Uh, we're going to give this a password. via BIOS and this is going to go through and uh, set up the TrueNAS so it's installing the base OS and I may speed this up okay now that should be the first installation so let's uh, reboot the system and see if it comes up. This is the initial bring up is always going to take a little bit longer than uh, once it's you know set up and running. Okay, so right now uh, it looks like everything's set up in the GUI, um, or not the GUI, but in the, the terminal, uh, which is, this is, if you had a monitor connected to uh, TrueNAS, this is what it would look like, uh, but it already tells you a lot of uh, good information here. So we have the IP address uh, where it's at, so we can try to go to that now. So it's 192.168.122.228, I think. Let's double check that. Yeah. And let's see if we can go in. Yeah, there we go. So by default, the password is always root. And then we set the password at initial setup. Okay, now we're in. So this is TrueNAS uh, running in the virtual machine. See, it didn't take too long to get set up. Um, now, first thing we're going to want to do is uh, go through and go to the storage. So we can add a pool. I'm going to create a pool. We'll call this um, pool one. Let's see. Show this with no serial numbers. Okay, I think this is because we're using a virtual disk. So. This, I believe, is new, first time I'm seeing it. But we can put this over here. Now, normally you would have, like, probably multiple disks in terms of um, what you would add. On a virtual machine, it really doesn't matter because they're virtual, so you're not actually protecting yourself um, <clears throat> in any way, shape, or form. And again, uh, RAID is not a backup, so uh, ideally you would have maybe a couple of pools or you have, like, some uh, different way of being able to back up the data. Uh, but you may want to have RAID either for performance reasons, if you're using um, spinning rust, or you do have like very high intensive workloads. Uh, but for now, we can probably just move forward. Um, yeah, and they says a Stripe VDEV is uh, discouraged if data lost, if it fails. But again, we're just using a virtual disk, so we're going to force, we're going to confirm, and we're going to create pool. Okay, so we have our pool from here. We can do things like create a data set, add a ZVOL. Uh, there are lots of uh, detailed features like user quotas, group quotas. We can do snapshots. Uh, right at the moment, uh, just for initial run through, let's just add a data set. Um, and let's say this is going to be an SMB share. And we can you can add comments if we want, don't need to right at the moment. Um, is ZFS deduplication. Oh, I think this is a new feature too. 
we're gonna leave it off for now. I'm not exactly sure how how stable it is. I believe this is this is new to some of the ZFS. Uh, I think it's 2.2 .2, um, is the latest version. Okay. Now what we're gonna do is we're also gonna look at some of the permissions here. So right now this is the owner is root. Um, ideally, what you probably want to do uh, for your Samba shares, you would create a separate account. So we create like a different user. Um, the quick and dirty way, uh, which is what we're going to do now, is we're just going to make right access for everything. So this essentially, with all of these checked, this is kind of like if you do a chmod uh, 777. Um, not the best security practice. Uh, we're just doing this for um, demonstration. I can link to a video where it sh I show a little bit more about creating a user and assigning the user. So, but essentially what you would do is you would have maybe like a, a local user and then that user has their own account and password and then you make that user the owner of the uh, VDEV or the, the data set and then uh, and then that user would then be essentially like the login for like the Samba share and that's probably a safer way to do this. Okay, so we have this data set which is called SMB share. Now what we can do is we can go to sharing we can look at uh, Windows Shares, SMB. Uh, and SMB, uh, in TrueNAS, it's labeled as Windows Shares. It's because it works with Windows, but it can also work with other operating systems like Mac OS and uh, Linux. Uh, do, do you support this? So we're going to go here. So all the pools in ZFS uh, in TrueNAS are located under Mount, um, the Mount folder. So then we can see our first pool. Um, and then we're using the, a subset of that, which is our data set. Um, share permissions, default share permissions, SMB warm. I think this is new as well. And they've added a lot of features in the past um, since I've last looked at uh, all of this. We'll just go with the defaults for now. Enable service. Okay, SMB has been enabled. Configure ACL. Yes, configure. Default. We're going to say all of the ACL is open. OK, so th this is the access control list. This has been around for a few years now, um, but I think they continue to work at it uh, at IX systems. So a lot of this is uh, who the owner. So this is going to be the owner. That would be root, um, the group. Uh, has full control. This is full control, and then everyone has the ability to do modification. Okay, we're going to save that, and then we can check our services. So if we wanted to make sure like this is running, and indeed it is. So we have the SMB share here. Um, TrueNAS is really great in terms of like the number of options you have. So in addition to sort of NAS standards like NFS, AFP. Uh, SMB. You also can do uh, HTTP servers with WebDAV. You can also do S3, uh, which would be able to link uh, object files um, or storage objects, and that could also be over HTTP, HTTPS. Uh, and you also have iSCSI, so it can do block storage as well. Um, so this is all running. What we can do now is we can go to our file manager, and we can see if we can connect to it. This one two 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 eight slash SMB share. Uh, actually, let me double check. Name, yeah. Okay, hopefully, this works. Try to connect and see if I can do. So if you had a registered user and you set like a specific user for this and then they were logging in, you would need to put in that username. Because we set everything as open, uh, I'm going to try to log in as an anonymous. Doesn't like that. I think the work group might not be set.
Ага. Okay. Yeah, so I forgot about the uh, enable guest access. So definitely something to remember. It's been, a, a, again, it's been a long time since I looked at TrueNAS. A great project, but just not something I've used in a while. Okay. Now at this point, uh, we should be set up. Let's just try to make a folder. Yep. Okay, so we see the test folder, and then if we went down to the shell, I went to mount pool one. SMB. Yeah, we see it. <laughs> okay, <coughs> so this is um, a quick tutorial of just installing and getting up and running with uh, TrueNAS. Again, um, better way to set up a share is to add like a user. And then you can also put that user as part of the uh, char in charge of the SMB system. So that uh, can help you wall it off um, and make sure that you do require like a username and password in order to log in. And then you can have that be like just the general login for the SMB share. Uh, there's also other ways to attach things like your AD account, um, your directory services. So you could add your Active Directory or your LDAP uh, as a way to manage uh, all of the authentication. But um, yeah, I just wanted to look through the project, you know, see um, how things are working. You see our pool information came in. And yeah, I mean, the UI and everything is, it's come a long way since I first started um, using FreeNAS oh, about five, six years ago. Um, and it just continues to get better. So. Hope you guys found this helpful, and uh, I'll maybe do some more uh, videos in the future about uh, more advanced usage with uh, TrueNAS. So thank you all very much.